The goal of this video is to give an overall view on containers technologies. We're not going through technical details. Instead of that, we're going to have a global view on containers and Docker. We've seen a lot of changes in Docker since its first version, and this could be confusing for engineers and developers trying to learn this technology. That's why we're going to see different concepts from the containers ecosystem, the relationship between them, an introduction to Docker, as well as its most important milestones. Container as a technology is not new, but the popularity of Docker could make some people think that it's the only container technology. In reality, there are many others. Let's enumerate some of them. The following list is ordered from the least to the most recent technology. Shrewd Jail for change root. It was introduced in 1979 and it's considered as one of the first containerization technologies. It allows you to isolate a process and its children from the rest of the operating system. The FreeBSD jail has an implementation of OS level virtualization and it was one of the first virtualization technologies at the OS level. Linux vServer, a virtual private server using OS level virtualization capabilities that was added later to Linux kernel. Oracle Solaris Containers, which is also an OS level virtualization technology and it's designed for x86 and Spark systems. A Solaris container is a combination of system resource controls and the boundary separation provided by zones. OpenVZ is also an OS level virtualization technology for Linux. It allows you to create multiple secure isolated Linux containers known as VPS. Process Containers. It was developed by engineers from Google. It's more known as C groups or control groups. Linux Containers or LXC. It's an OS level virtualization technology that allows running multiple isolated systems on a control host using a single Linux kernel. Warden. At its initial stage, it used LXC as a container runtime. It was later replaced by a Cloud Foundry implementation. Let me contain that for you. It's the open source version of Google's container stack. Google engineers have been collaborating with Docker team over libcontainer and porting the core concepts and abstractions to this project. The project is not actively being developed, but in the future, the core of its core will be probably replaced by libcontainer. Docker, which is the technology we're going to see later, and it's the tool that can package an application and its dependencies in a container that can run almost on any server. Rocket, which is an application container engine focused on security and open standards. So as we have seen, Docker is not the first containerization technology, but it's the most known one. This technology was introduced in 2013 and it was changing and evolving over the last years. These are the main components of Docker platform. Docker stands between the infrastructure and the application stack, and it's composed of an industry standard container runtime called ContainerD, a native orchestration tool called Docker Swarm, Docker Community Edition, which is the open source version of Docker, and the Enterprise Edition that provides commercial management services. Now, let's dive deeper into some concepts and tools like ContainerD and LXC. The first execution environment of Docker was LXC. It was later replaced by libcontainer starting from the version 0.9. Libcontainer is a Docker interface to Linux facilities like cgroups, namespaces, netlink, and netfilter. In 2015, Docker announced RunC which is a lightweight portable container runtime. It's basically a little command line tool to leverage libcontainer directly without going through the Docker engine. 
The goal of RunC is to make standards containers available everywhere. It was later donated to the Open Container Initiative, the OCI. So the OCI is a lightweight open governance structure that was launched by Docker, CoreOS, and other leaders in the container industry on 2015. It maintains some projects like RunC and the runtime and the image specifications. Its purpose is developing standards around the container industry. So if you create, for example, a container using Docker, you can run it on any other engine. In 2016, Docker spanned out Containerly and donated it to a new community project. Breaking out this component into a separate project allows Docker to move the container supervision out of the core Docker engine and into a separate daemon. With this new architecture, when you run a Docker container, the Docker engine creates the image, pass it to Containerd that calls Containerd shim. Now Containerd shim uses RunC to run the container, then it allows it to exit after it starts. The main two benefits of this model are running daemonless containers and the ability to restart or upgrade engine without breaking the running containers. So 2017 was the year during which uh, containers went mainstream. That's why Docker was building several Docker editions beyond Linux. Docker for Mac, Docker for Windows, Docker for AWS, GCP, etc. With this container's mass adoption, Docker Inc. realized that new production models were needed. And that's why it started the Mobi project. The Mobi project was started to enable a new level of collaboration and production. It's an open source project uh, with the aim of advancing the software containerization movement. It provides a Lego set of dozens of components and the framework for assembling them into custom container-based systems. Let's take a look on uh, the mobile project components. This project is composed of containerized components like Containerd and SwarmKit, a framework to assemble these components into a standalone container platform, tools to build, test, and deploy artifacts for these assemblies, Mobi Origin, which is the open base for the Docker container platform, and other examples of container systems using various components from the Mobi library or from other projects. As you can see, Docker production model started like any other common open source monolithic project. It moved to splitting out the single project to different open components. Then to a model that allows sharing these components and assemblies. And finally to a model that provides more collaboration on components and common assemblies. Let's now see some components of the Mobi project. The first one is Containerd, which is the industry-based core container runtime for Docker. It's available as a daemon for Linux and Windows, and it manages the complete container lifecycle, like the image transfer and storage, container execution and supervision, low-level storage, and the network attachments. The second component is Linux Kit. This tool helps developers build secure, portable, and lean operating systems for containers. It's currently supported by local hypervisors like Hyper-V and VMware, uh, some cloud-based platforms like AWS, GCP, and Azure, and bare metal uh, on Packet.net. The third component is InfraKit. It's a toolkit for creating and managing declarative, immutable, and self-healing infrastructures. InfraKit is designed to automate setup and management of infrastructure in support of distributed systems and high-level container orchestration systems. It's useful for some use cases like bootstrapping orchestration tools like Docker Swarm or Kubernetes and uh, creating auto-scaling clusters across some public cloud like AWS and it, its auto-scaling groups. Our fourth component is Lip Network, which is a native Go implementation for connecting containers. It supports the development of network drivers and plugins, and it aims to satisfy the composable need for networking in containers. 
Let's now move to uh, the presentation of Docker Swarm. It's an orchestration tool built in Docker Engine and it started as a standalone tool and was natively included in Docker starting from the version 1.12. It uses the Docker CLI to create a Swarm cluster, deploy and manage applications and services. One of the most important and recent changes is integrating Kubernetes natively into Docker. This was announced in October 2017. With this integration, Docker customers and developers have the option to use both Kubernetes and Swarm to orchestrate container workloads. The coming versions of Docker with Kubernetes will allow users to deploy their Docker Compose apps as Kubernetes native pods and services. So this is the new Docker component schema. Kubernetes is considered as a native orchestration tool, just like Swarm. In this video, we have seen together the evolution of Docker and discovered some tools like libcontainer, libnetwork, runc, Swarm, containerd, and Linux Kit. It was an introduction to Docker and the containers ecosystem. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check the links with this video and visit painlessdocker.com to get more details about painless docker training. Thank you for watching.